uh, almost exclusively with the drawing phase. As soon as I start painting and laying in value, the I, I can understand the form as long as I've laid in the shapes properly. Okay. Yeah, then I don't think it's a problem. You know, uh, I think it's, it's fine. Uh, if you want to, let's say, force the issue where you're always going to you know, think more in 3D and less uh, of, of 2D, you could, let me just draw it over here. Instead of like, you know, looking at the drawing and like trying to map out these shapes of like the forehead and the sunglasses, instead of that, like actually draw a 3D bucket in, in that angle of the head and figure out where the forms are and construct the forms onto the actual bucket. That way you have to actually think of where these features are in space on this 3D element. And then like, almost like you have a rock and you're sculpting uh, by chipping away at it. You know, this exercise would help you strengthen the ability to sense form over 2D shape. And, and right now, even now I'm mixing the both of them, like 2D and 3D, you know, like the shape of the lips. I'm not really thinking of the form because it's like, it's, it's too complex to be considering the 3D when we're this far zoomed out. And even like the shape of, of the shirt right there, like I, I'd rather do a appealing S curve than trying to understand the form first. Right? And and so I guess the, the bottom line is start with a 3D space or a 3D shape and then carve into it and then see where that takes you. Okay, yeah. Um, I actually tried a, a sort of similar approach on the one just below that, the girl with the really wide eyes. Yeah. And something that was really difficult and I find difficult when I'm never I'm doing a drawing from references like if I do it in a constructive kind of a way so yeah. I lay in the cranium and then I try to find like the center line and then I try to find like the brow line determining for some reason determining vertically where the brow line sits on the cranium after I've laid in after I've laid in the cranium seems to be really difficult like when I did a drawing or a tracing over of her reference because I was struggling struggling so much um it was actually like a lot lower than I had anticipated. You mean this right uh, here? Yeah. And it's like, how, how, I don't really have a good way to determine. It's like, okay, vertically speaking, from the bottom of the cranium form to the top, how can I visually determine from the reference where it sits without tracing over it? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's the whole purpose of this exercise where, you know, we're used to like specific mathematics of like, okay, halfway here and then. You know the, the cranium is going to be here and the eyebrows will be right there you know but this exercise forces us to break out of that and realize that it's almost rarely that specific like with all of these it's like it's going to be at a different spot because of the ratios and people just look different but also the other tricky thing here is um we we don't know where the cranium ends but like visually like it's it's like covered in hair right so even if we measure it down from the top it's like is, is that the top or is this the top right and you can sort of guess but we can see that that's sort of right there, but within this, if we just look over here at this, this line right there, and let's guess eyes are halfway. Let's see if that even rings true. Yeah, it's pretty close, but I don't know. I guess the brow is like just above that, but again, it's like a, it's a, it's a more squished proportion. So you have to kind of accommodate for that. And the, the other thing is like, if, if you're, if you're drawing a female head versus a male head, like a male head, the, the brow ridge is going to be much more prominent and very easy to notice. Whereas in this case, it's like a little bit flattened and, le and less protruding. But, you know, I, of course, it's also another thing that just comes with a lot of practice. Does that help at all? Yeah, absolutely. Um, another question about this particular study is I, I found it really hard. Like she has such a square jaw shape and I found it really hard to in any in any reference take what would normally be a more masculine feature and put it on a, a woman and keep it reading feminine like that was a really a big struggle with this particular one mm. Does that makes well, sense yeah yeah um if we were to use an x-ray you'll actually find that the jaw probably is smaller than that uh, but because there's there's skin there's uh, cheeks there's like depth to it that might have the illusion that it's like a more masculine jaw but that's not always the case. Having said that, um, proportionally, as long as the eyes are, for example, if we have, uh, I think I did this demo before, but if you have the eyes like this 
on a on a male skull on a female skull everything will be the same size i'm sorry this one's the female skull because the our orbitals are big but for a male skull everything changes in size except the eyes so it pretty much does this and then you know it goes further apart the bottom line is like just by doing that this looks more masculine than that because of the ratio of the orbitals we know whatever the sharpness of the jawline or smoothness or curves that that varies a lot but the thing that is consistent is making sure the eyes are proportionally we'll say on a female skull having said that you know it's like the other thing that that's that's i think a bit off here is uh, the placement of the mouth and if the eyes nose and mouth are closer together the the more youthful and more feminine the person will look which is happening here very clearly right so we could i think if we were to do it more accurately i think this nostril shake should be a little bit higher and then the corner of the mouth over here which gives us a line like this kind of nose there Right. And so just by pushing this stuff up, it'll also make the person more feminine, even if we were to put a more masculine jaw. It'll still look female in terms of the character design. So I don't know, there's a lot of tricky things there, but does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. That's helpful. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to 